Firewalk Studios is a complete catastrophe. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. My previous videos talking about a couple of the employees there were just the tip of the iceberg with the information that I've been diving into and the resources available finding more about this company. This very woke situation that is extremely left-leaning where anyone who so much as dares not call someone by the pronouns that they've required you to would be in fear of being let go or severely blacklisted from the company. And that is just the beginning of how bad and deep this rabbit hole goes. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down Firewalk Studios' newest game, Concord, and why Firewalk Studios is a complete and utter disaster. In the midst of the colossal failure of live service hero shooter Concord, I've been in communication with someone with intimate knowledge of what's going on at Firewalk Studios. Someone who would like to remain anonymous, but also wants this word to get out there in order to help the video game industry heal and go to a better place because the road it's been going down is anything but good. They've courageously stepped forward as a whistleblower to reveal the reality of a toxic, ideology-driven culture that has insidiously infected and ultimately wrecked Sony's once-promising studios. And for those of you that don't know, Firewalk Studios was purchased by Sony. Originally, it was part of probably Monsters, and Sony acquired them after working with them on several promising projects. The studio, once prided itself on innovation and inclusivity, has taken a sharp turn towards extreme progressive ideologies. Based off of everything we've seen from Concord so far, shocking. I know. This person with inside knowledge has revealed that while the studio publicly touts itself as people focused, it's nothing more than hollow rhetoric. In reality, any employee that so much as attempts to say or convey anything that could be construed as expressing a right-leaning opinion is swiftly either axed or blacklisted by HR. And this mentality has permeated not just Firewalk Studios, but the entire video game industry at large for AAA game studios. There are so many employees working in it that are scared to speak up because the ideologies have gone so far left-leaning that anyone that so much as dares say, uh, I'm not really a fan of this direction, I feel like the gamers themselves aren't going to take too well to this, are immediately blackballed by their company. While this isn't necessarily a surprise, it reconfirms much of what many of us were already thinking about how a mind virus can completely destroy a company and Firewalk Studios is exhibit A for that and in addition to that the source that I had reached out to me with intimate knowledge on the situation was talking about how this company in particular was mandating the use of pronouns within the company itself where even if you didn't want to have pronouns listed you had to list them which is really obnoxious for someone that doesn't believe and make believe. The studio has mandated the use of pronouns, embedded diversity, equity, and inclusion in every facet of the company culture. According to the insight given to me, HR had openly voiced a desire to reduce the number of straight white men in the studio without fear of any repercussions. They created special Slack channels for women only and other minority groups only, ironically making it an even more divisive work environment. You would think doing these kind of things, at least on the surface. They were trying to be more inclusive by making these groups for these individual people that fit into the pegs of the holes that they're trying to drill. But in reality, it was anything but. And that's something I don't want to just gloss over, by the way. The whole HR was openly communicating at the company that they wanted to reduce the amount of straight white men. That is a major red flag. A huge concern that I feel like a lot of companies these days can just get away with because white man bad, get rid of white men, especially especially straight white men, if they want to start identifying as a woman or a professor, it's fine, we can keep them, but if they identify as a straight white man, then they are gonna be gone. A couple decades ago, I'd look at a situation like this, like, there's no way that that could be reality. We would never get to a point where people would say that openly and be fine with it, but here we are. In theory, the one thing that these types of people seem so opposed to is exactly what ends up consuming them. They 
act like diversity, equity, and inclusion is a way to include everyone, but they do that in all the wrong ways by dividing and conquering and making people feel like they're included in a special group by excluding the rest of the company. And in a previous video, I had talked about how Firewalk Studios developer Lisa Brown was requiring employees to contact her and call her as the professor, among many other very strange tendencies and requirements that she would enlist people to have for her, despite not having any of the credentials to be called a professor. And her influence had created a hostile work environment where dissenting opinions were not to be tolerated. She's known throughout the studio for her anti-gun stances and extreme political views, advocated for the firing of unvaxxed employees. And let's remember, she's the lead developer of a squad-based hero shooter called Concord, a game that requires guns. And she opposes guns in real life. And I'm sure many people can separate like reality from fiction, but people that are requiring others to live in their fantasy land, I wonder where they start to draw that line. The entire character team at Firewalk Studios is reportedly 100% progressive and extremely tight-knit, ensuring that only those who align with their ideologies are hired to join them, even though they talk about how this company is founded on the premise of being inclusive and diversive, it's not diversity of thought. It's diversity of what you look like as long as you think the same way that we do. And that's ultimately exactly what destroys a company. According to the source with intimate knowledge, the concept artist Imagine Amanda on Twitter, who I talked about in a different previous video, also exemplifies exactly the type of employee who passes the rigorous ideological screening processes to ensure the same group think is added to the current pile of employees. Imagine Amanda was on Twitter talking about how Grums is bad and how all these anti-woke grifters on Twitter are bad people. When in reality, we just care about the game industry and want it to go back to the way it was. A game industry that cared about what the gamers wanted out of their games instead of pushing ideological propaganda down everyone's throats. And here's exactly where the company Firewalk Studios goes down the rabbit hole. And here's where it gets really crazy. As described by the person with intimate knowledge, it is a cult of wokeness. And you probably could tell where this was going. The insider described the environment at Firewalk Studios as a cult mentality, where employees are afraid to speak out against poor design choices for fear of being blacklisted. There is no open dialogue at this company. There's no, hey, I think gamers out there might have an issue with what you're doing here, because this flies in the face of what gamers, I don't know, crazy thought here, actually want out of their game. Nepotism runs rampant, and those in power prioritize ideological purity over creative excellence or divergence. It's a perfect description of a company that tries to say and do all the right things publicly, but in reality, they do everything opposite behind closed doors. They operate under saying, oh, we care about all this inclusivity and diversity. We want everyone to be a part of this company for freedom of expression and ideas. As long as those freedom of expressions and ideas that you have fall in line with exactly what we want out of them. This has led to a studio culture that despises you, the average gamer, and is far more focused on pushing political agendas and ideologies than creating engaging and entertaining games. And here we thought the robot pronoun thing was bad. It doesn't even scratch the surface. The whistleblower also talked about the culture at Firewalk Studios being incredibly toxic, marked by a complete lack of humility and an incredibly fierce echo chamber. And personally, I saw the beginnings of this kind of workplace mentality all the way back in 2007, 2008, when I worked at Sony Online Entertainment. It was not anywhere close to what the industry's become, but I did see pockets of it happening all the way back then, where if you kind of started to oppose the ideologies, you were the bad guy, you were the outcast, you were blacklisted. My source said that the assumptions that many of us have about how West Coast game developers feel about their audiences are actually largely accurate. Unfortunately, many of the workers at these companies are extremely spiteful and dismissive of offering differing viewpoints and don't like 
the gamers that they're making the games for. Those who can go along to get along remain silent, while the vocal leftist groups always seem to get its way through a thoroughly compromised HR and recruiting department. This approach has run rampant throughout many AAA studios, and honestly, I feel like it threatens the longevity of the entire video game industry as we know it. This is precisely why the whistleblower reached out. They've had enough. They want change. We all do. And I think it's fascinating. Hypnotic brought this up in his stream the other day, talking about the situation as well, that this type of situation used to go to a journalist, someone in the video game industry professionally, exposing this kind of rhetoric and information that's going on, corrupting a company from the inside out. And what's transpired is journalists out there, you know, the activists posing as journalists, have become so corrupted themselves that they can't even be trusted with this information to go public with it because they side with the studios and they want that type of mentality to continue to perpetuate forward. And as we all know, I covered it previously as well, the disastrous performance of Concord's open beta is bad enough, but in reality, it's not because the game is bad per se, more so it's a direct result of this toxic workplace culture. With only 2,388 players on Steam during the open beta launch that was free for everyone, the game has failed to generate any significant interest whatsoever when it comes to the entire gaming community at large. It's a far cry from the numbers we've seen from other hero-based shooters like Overwatch and Valorant, and the game's $40 price tag in an era where most competitors are free to play only compounds the issue. And it goes again to speaking how these people making the game are in such an echo chamber that they think just making a game and charging money for it will just work because traditionally that's how it's worked without taking a step back and looking at the industry for what it's become and saying, oh, the game that we're making is in a competitive genre where other competitors are free. We should probably make ours free too, so that we don't doom our game. But instead, these same people are so ignorant to the fact, so narcissistic, that they feel like they can do no wrong, not look at the landscape, and just say, we're deciding this, and if you don't buy it, you're a bigot, and you're the problem. The person with intimate knowledge about Firewalk Studios explained that they had reached out in hopes that by exposing the truth about Firewalk Studios, this could be a wake-up call for other companies, so that they will begin to acknowledge the issues of political persecution within the video game industry. The current practice of screening new hires based off their acceptance of DEI initiatives has to stop. Until then, studios like Firewalk will continue to churn out mediocre games, alienate their player base, and ultimately see their projects fail. And they'll have no one to blame but themselves. The writing's on the wall, the information is there, it's obvious to people who are not ingrained with this indoctrination of propaganda to push it forward on people to say, hey, how about we just make games that people like to play and go from there. I know, wild concept, but maybe we should just give it a shot. But it starts with HR and the hiring process. And until that changes, nothing is going to fix this. I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information, check out SmashJT.com for the full article going into a deep dive of Firewalk Studios. And as far as I understand, this is all the information that I have. It took a while to put this all together. And thank you so much again to the very brave whistleblower that reached out to me with this information so that I could go public with it. I think that this is a really good first step because let's be honest, we all know Firewalk Studios is going to close up shop shortly after Concord comes out, but maybe other companies will see this as a beacon of hope of saying, hey, let's not go down that same path. Let's make some serious changes in our organization and make sure we make games for gamers and not try to appeal to this DEI propaganda that's dooming every company out there. Just a wild thought. I'd love to see it happen, but it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. If you guys appreciate what I'm doing, please consider hitting that join button. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. The dweeb of the week. I don't know what is wrong with Smash JT. It seems like he's going to be the dweeb of the week every week because he has bad takes after bad takes after bad takes. Smash JT. Smash JT. Smash JT. Smash the change, smash the